Thank you everyone for joining today. So the autism spectrum disorder, also known as ASD, affects one in 59 individuals in the US alone. Almost all individuals with ASD show deficits in nonverbal communication. The problem is only half of the ASD population receives their required behavioral therapy. Due to this COVID lockdown, the situation of in-person therapy is even worse. Now the question is, can intelligent virtual agents help improve the nonverbal communication skills? There are multiple advantages of using intelligent virtual agents. At first, the virtual agent-based training can take place online. Second, such online tools can enable individuals to practice multiple times. Third, individuals with ASD can practice nonverbal communication in their own environment. And additionally, behavioral therapists can monitor their progress. So in this presentation, I'll first talk about the design of a virtual agent-based conversation practice tools. Then I'll talk about a Wizard of Oz study and how we collected the data. Then I'll talk about how we automated the system. Then I'll talk about the study with teens with autism. And finally, I'll talk about the findings from the study. This is LISA interface. LISA stands for Live Interactive Social Skills Assistant. People can have a conversation with this virtual agent. At the bottom of the interface, you can see four icons, which represents four nonverbal behaviors. Eye contact is mild volume and body movement. The icons are green by default. During the conversation, they can go red, prompting the user to adjust corresponding behavior. For example, in this case, the eye contact icon is red, which means the user is not making enough eye contact. Our design team consists of a behavioral psychiatrist, a UX designer, a pediatric psychiatrist. They have guided us throughout the interface design system development and the user study. In this particular design, we made sure that users receive simple and easy to understand feedback. We also selected only four nonverbal cues to reduce their cognitive load. And we chose only two colors for the feedback, uh, which is similar to the traffic signals to make sure that the feedback is non distracting For the first conversation feedback, we designed three types of summary. First, the reminder, which indicates how many times the user receives what type of feedback. The base is uh, represents how long the icons were green, and the response lag represents on average how long the icons were dead. Users can compare their feedback throughout multiple sessions. In this particular case, the users got worse in their eye contact but improved their body language. So let me show you a video of a person talking to Lisa. What was your favorite class so far? Probably microeconomics. Did you find it hard? A little bit. I think it was more interesting than it was hard. I like artificial intelligence. That was my favorite by far. Though obviously I am a little bit biased on this subject. I really think the material is great and the product is even better. At the beginning, we had no training data, uh, which is why we used a wizard of OS technique to collect data from human subjects. There were two human operators uh, running the system. Uh, one was responsible for giving real-time feedback and the other one was responsible for conducting the conversation. Using the wizard of OS technique, we conducted a study with college students uh, in the context of speed dating. Uh, you can see some of the photos from the speed dating study. From the speed dating study, we collected 46 videos of interaction between Lisa and the participants. We extracted facial and positive features. We also gathered the dialogue transcripts. We use this data set to train a machine learning model to generate feedback. So this is how the automated system works. The human user can say something to Lisa. In this case, he says, my favorite class is math. 
The audio, video, and transcripts are then captured. The system then extracts the positive and facial features from audio and video. Using the hidden Markov model, uh, we generate feedback. Using the transcript, we first match the keywords, and then we use the hierarchical dialogue manager to generate responses. So finally, Lisa would say, so I, we both are scientifically minded. We then use this as automated LISA system to conduct a study with teams with ASD. And this was not a randomized control study. Our target was to understand whether the system can be perceived as useful to the individuals with ASD. We also wanted to know what design modifications are necessary. So in this study, we recruited nine teenagers with high functioning autism. The participants were recruited through the University of Rochester Medical Center, and the parents were also invited in each session. One participant was uh, recruited at a time. So during the study session, in each study, we first had a debrief and consent, where the parents were also present. Uh, then Lisa introduced herself. After the introduction, uh, Lisa had a round of conversation covering three topics, getting to know each other, living in the current city, and imaginary crazy room. Here is a video from the first conversation. So after the conversation, participants had a two minute break. After the break, participants had another round of conversation, uh, but this time Lisa discussed three new topics, uh, city I want to move to in the future, free time and movies. During both conversations, uh, participants received real time feedback and post summary feedback. After the Lisa session, participants filled out a survey and then we had an interview session with their parents and the participants. So here's a video of how the participants actually reacted to the feedback. Wow. Yeah. What do you like most about Rochester? Well, I kind of like a lot of things about Rochester. There are so many, I can't pick one. That's right. And what do you not like about it? Well, I like everything about it. I like a lot about it. There, I can't tell what I don't like about it. That would bother me too. Is there anything you would change? So you can see that he was slouching and then he received feedback on his body movement. And uh, then he tried to adjust his posture, uh, but then he started searching again. So this is a major limitation that when uh, feedback is gone, uh, usually participants go back to the previous state immediately. In the survey, we presented a statement and asked the participants to rate in a scale from a strongly agree to a strongly disagree. And significantly more participants said that Lisa was understanding, they could pay attention to the icons while having the conversation and the feedback was useful. We performed a thematic analysis. So first we transcribed the interview sessions and then performed thematic analysis. Uh, here are a few themes that emerged throughout the interview. So the first one is uh, the feedback accuracy. Participants really like the fact that the computers can capture their nonverbal cues and give feedback. One participant said the fact that it was able to actually detect the facial features and everything being so accurate, I would consider that is good enough to actually train on. The next thing is Lisa's response. So Lisa was a little slow to respond to the user. Uh, this was due to the fact that the system first need to capture the whole sentence from the user, transmit it via internet and get response from the server. So one participant say, I would use it in future if they can make it so that she can respond a little quicker. So here's a video where Lisa's responses were very slow. 
Now, my favorite, my favorite um, class is math. No, not really. Not really. The next theme is Lisa's appearance. Uh, we initially were unsure whether we should use a cartoonish or a realistic looking virtual agent. However, most participants wanted to have more realistic looking virtual agents. One said, well, I kind of pretty much prefer something a little more, more realistic. And the last thing is the desire for adult identity. Most participants wanted to be treated like an adult. One participant became very frustrated and said that uh, just so you know, I am already 17 years old. I'm growing up and some of these little kids things I have outgrown. So here's a, another video of him interacting with Lisa. Uh, Lisa was talking about an imaginary crazy room. I wouldn't have a crazy room. It would just be normal. Like my mom's room, you know, like a kitchen, uh, basement, living room, bedroom, I don't know how many bedrooms, just with more than one, okay, yeah. So from the interview transcript, we found four key recommendations for future developers. Uh, using the thematic analysis, we came up with these recommendations. First, the user should be fully briefed to avoid unrealistic expectations. Second, uh, incorporate positive acknowledgement of behavior to change. We only flash the red icons and greens were there by default. Uh, they wanted to have some sort of positive feedback as well. Third one is a realistic appearance of the virtual agent. And the fourth one is the conversation personalization. Uh, some participants wanted to talk about math, some wanted to talk about movies. So this is why we need some sort of conversational personalization. This study has some major limitations uh, that we could not address. Uh, so the first one is how we have collected the training data. The data was collected from college students and not from the teens with ASD. We understand that this was not ideal, but we needed a starting point. In future, we can use the data we collected from this study for training purposes. Second, the feedback. Uh, we used red and green color theme without realizing that what would happen if the participant is colorblind. Uh, we, will, we plan to incorporate colorblind friendly color palettes in future. Third, we did not realize we didn't analyze the transit of the Lisa and participants conversation that could reveal more information about the dialogue design. The fourth limitation is the accuracy of the feedback. Although we have prior publications where we have discussed the machine learning models and performance, we did not specifically calculate the accuracy of the system's feedback in this particular study. And the fifth limitation is the study was not a randomized control study. So we cannot be sure about the effect of having conversation with Lisa. In future, we plan to run a randomized control trial. So finally, I would like to thank all my collaborators and colleagues uh, for their support. I would especially thank Dr. Tristan Smith, who was the pioneer of pediatric psychiatry research. He helped us a lot throughout his research. During this study, he passed away and we gratefully remember all his incredible work in autism space. So thank you, everyone.